if you want to get up and get more to eat, get some of the drink, grab some more of the donut snap, by all means, go ahead. Don't worry about us. This is a reminder. The whole idea behind uh, what today was, it's, a, rem it's a, a return to what they called the early days of the church, the house churches. Uh, this is before they had any churches, any cathedrals, any basilicas. Uh, the temple was still standing in Jerusalem. The Romans hadn't destroyed it yet. But that was a Jewish temple. So the Christians, even though they were a Jewish sect, they weren't going to meet there. Uh, Peter and Paul hadn't gone to Rome yet, or if they had, they hadn't stayed. So they weren't uh, yet really constructing the church as we know it in Rome. So people would gather together in houses, they would gather around a meal table, they would eat, they would have that as their communion meal, part of, the, of their dinner would be the communion meal. They might have a whole letter, a copy of a letter, a piece of a letter of one of the epistles written to one of the churches in their area. They definitely would not have had a Bible. They would not have had uh, the Jewish Torah, the scrolls. And they might have had a visitor or two who might talk a little. But most of their talking wasn't sermons around the dinner table. They would go out and they would preach for hours in the public forums to reach as many people as possible. The people of the home church were already converted. So they were their support and their hosts and their friends. Their target audience, if you have it, were the people who hadn't converted yet. They were the ones out in the public. So that's what we have today. We're going to have our communion, and we're going to read from one of the epistles, and there'll be a very, very brief little message about it, not much. Uh, we'll do some prayers, we'll sing a few songs, and we'll just enjoy each other's company today, all right? Amen? Okay. So before we start, I want to uh, start with a couple of public service announcements. Uh, the first one... I want to thank you all for being so very worried and concerned about me for these last couple of months with my health. I'm going to surprise you all. I am not dying. I know there were rumors that my death was imminent or possibly imminent. It was an inquiry. It was an inquiry. You will be shocked to hear that according to my doctor, I am actually in good general health. I do have to do some stuff with the diabetes, we knew that, so he and I are addressing that. And uh, I, have, I currently have a strong heart, but I am at risk for heart disease because of the diabetes and because my dad died at my age of a heart attack. So he says, you are going to go start seeing a cardiologist, right? Said, yes. I knew that was going to come. But currently, my heart's good. So that's all good news. So thank you for your concern, your worry. Uh, we are addressing my health issues, whatever they are. <coughs> Uh, but he says not to worry, I am in good health, and I am not going to be dropping dead unless a herd of deer runs through my house in the next couple of days. Uh, the other thing is, I've seen that once since I've been there. We've had deer in the yard once, and it wasn't one, it was nine. And they literally bolted through while I was sitting on the court. Uh, the other good news is that I went in the beginning of December uh, before DCOM, which is the District Committee on Ministry. And that's where we have to go uh, as licensed pastors. We have to go every year to basically tell them, uh, you know, what we're doing with our ministry, kind of give them an idea of uh, what we're, our plans are, where we're going, and um, you know, the various things that we're doing. And then they review us and ask us some questions. And I got my letter back saying that I passed my my interview and that I am uh, licensed for another year. We're only licensed one year at a time. And unfortunately, there is nothing like, if you do really good, we're going to give you three years. No, it's only one year at a time, but I did get my license renewed, so I will be a pastor for another year. Yeah, after that, well, we'll see. So those are both good news, and I wanted to share that with you. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here together this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to come and to celebrate your supper. Remember your son, as he taught us to, to fellowship with one another and to enjoy each other's company, to welcome people into our doors, and to care for one another. Help us when we leave here today to do that to all we need.
remembering that in all times we serve the living Christ. In his holy name, amen. 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 Oh, Mr. Warren, why don't we start with the song? Where do you want to start? 369, Delta 69. 369. Ricky, you'll have to stand. We're going to sit. Holy, 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 holy,
holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Get my TV so one thing I've got. of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we are one body, and Christ was broken for us, so we break this bread in remembrance of his sacrifice. And the cup which we offer and drink from is the cup of the living sacrifice that contains the blood of Jesus, shed on behalf of us, all before us, and all to follow us. The table is set, and all are invited. What we're going to do is going to serve each other. So I'm going to start with Annette, and we'll go down this side of the table, and it'll come up, and then I'll walk it over to this side, and we'll go on down, and it'll come back up. Because so again, we're a little tight for space, and it's nice when we serve each other. She gets to go first. <laughs> Thank you. 
that's what everyone was worried about.
this plan is that the Gentiles would be co-heirs and part of the same body, and that they would share with the Jews in the promise of God in Christ Jesus through the gospel. I became a servant of the gospel because of the grace that God showed me through the exercise of his power. God gave his grace to me, the least of all God's people, to preach the good news about the immeasurable riches of Christ to the Gentiles. <laughs> God sent me to reveal the secret plan that had been hidden since the beginning of time by God, who created everything. God's purpose is now to show the rulers and powers in the heavens the many different varieties of his wisdom through the church. This was consistent with the plan he had from the beginning of time that he accomplished through Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ, we have bold and confident access to God through faith in him. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So a very simple question. What does this have to do with us today? It's not rhetorical. What does this have to do with us we today? We need to go out and preach the message to other people I don't know. We go out and we can preach the message. That's true. That helps others. But what does it have to do or mean explicitly for us? <coughs> Remember, this is... Six, uh, three Kings Day, right? The 6th of January. This is the end of Christmas. This is when the wise men arrived at the house that Christ was living in, bearing him gifts. So the message they chose has something to do with a gift. What's the gift for us? The gift of Jesus Christ. And that means? Eternal life. Salvation. Salvation, eternal life. Salvation. You have to remember, when Christ first came, he was a Jewish Messiah. Right? He was a chosen savior of a select, relatively small percent of the population of the planet. They were the chosen race. They were God's people. Christ was God's gift to them, not to the rest of the world. Right? Not to the rest of the world. Think about that a minute. Think about what that would mean for all of us who are the Gentiles, right? because we don't follow the Jewish dietary rules or the Jewish clothing rules. We don't do sacrifices. We don't believe we're saved by the law. We read far more than just the Torah. Right? So we're not Jewish. We may be circumscribed for health reasons, but we don't do it for religious purposes. We're not Jews. <coughs> We're part of a Judeo-Christian culture and history. The Jewish traditions are part of our past, and that's wonderful, but we are not Jewish. So if Christ only comes to the Jews, we're left out in the cold. We're like the Syrophoenician woman says when she's talking to Christ, and what Christ says to her, we're the dogs. Remember that sermon? Mm -hmm. We're the dogs. Now there's some confusion because we had that sermon, we had that message, and in that gospel, it almost sounds like she convinces Christ to accept us. In this message, it says, well, that was the plan all along. Truth is, we don't know. It, it might have been the plan all, all along, or it might have been the plan changed. That really doesn't matter. What does matter is that the plan is one that now includes us. That because, for whatever reason, whether a hidden agenda or a change of heart on God's part, and God does change his mind on occasion in the Bible. We are now part, we are co-heirs, it says. We are now part of God's salvation plan. We get to be saved, to enter into the kingdom of heaven, to live for eternity more with God in Christ. That is the good news. If you take nothing else ever out of the Bible, that is what you take out of the Bible is that through Christ Jesus, we are saved. Amen? Amen. 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 Maybe that now, was the this, that was the plan all along, and Christ wanted her to realize it. It's possible. Way. That's very possible. You often talk with questions. Exactly. And a lot, of the, a lot of the disciples studied Greek philosophy, and that was how the Greeks talked, <coughs> with questions. They didn't want to give you the answer, they wanted you to come up with the answer yourself. Very possible. We don't know. 
there's one other little story I want to share with you while we're sitting around the table because it's a table story and I love it. A man dies and he goes up to uh, the gates of heaven. St. Peter's there and St. Peter says, well, you know, you're a rather special case. You've lived a life that's pretty decent. Well, you made some mistakes. We're going to let you choose. You can go to heaven, you can go to hell. It'll be your choice. The man says, well, can I check them out first and see which one I would like better? <laughs> St. Peter goes, sure. Yeah. Not a problem, we'll take you on a tour. So they go down to hell, and it's a table much like this table is, filled with every possible food that you could imagine that you could love, every drink that you could imagine that you could love. And tables fill, people all over the table. But man notices that the people are shackled to the benches. So they can't get up. And their arms and their bodies are shackled to each other, so they can't really move around side to side. And they have these huge eight-foot-long forks and spoons that are shackled to their wrists to feed themselves with. And everyone's starving. They go, well, this doesn't look very good. Let's go see heaven. So they go to heaven, exact same room, exact same table, same shackles to the, to the benches, same shackles to the person next to them, same shackles to the eight foot long forks and spoons, but everyone is fed Thank you. and well content and happy. And the man goes, I don't get it. What's the difference? It's the same food. Peter goes, yeah. Same tables. Peter goes, yeah. Same Conditions, yeah. So what's the difference? He says, in heaven, we feed each other. In hell, they try to feed themselves. That's the difference. That's what makes us Christians. We care enough to feed each other. And there's, that's the reason this is Probably my favorite service. So I love to feed people. And I love to worship. And this does both. So whenever you get that opportunity, embrace it. Because it's a wonderful feeling to see happy, contented, well-fed people sitting together, fellowshipping with one another, worshiping with one another, serving. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's have another song before we open up the first three. One of three. Warren has to go to play. What's that? One of three?
mindful of all the ills in the world and all that has beset people we care about and hear about and know. And we come before your throne and we ask your blessings upon them. Healing, wisdom, strength, comfort, assurance. Your presence, Lord, to be in their lives. To build them up. To support them when they would fall. We ask that you be with the people that we name. Not for our sake, Lord, but for theirs. <coughs> that they may know that you are God. They are yours. And you are theirs. <coughs> so for sharing your Todd, I ask for healing from their pain. Bob and Rosa. Mm. Mary Kay Hill's son. The Matthews family and the Coates family and the loss of their loved ones. Kevin, Carolyn. For Bruce. Viola, Jordan, Alice. Courtney and her boy. Kathy's mom. Kathy's dad. Vic. Bobby, Nikki, yeah. Jack. For the Wayne. The Wales family, they're lost. Carolyn and his family. Nancy and Barb. <coughs> Armed Services. Daddy. Or if there was anyone with, here with us today, and mm -hmm. them, whatever mm -hmm. their circumstances are, guide them and help them. Heavenly Father, we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus. We know that you are with all these people, but we also know that some of them may not realize it. Open their eyes, Lord, and their ears, that they may hear your words and see your loving face. In Christ's holy name, amen. 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 Now is our opportunity to return to God a portion of that which he has blessed us with. We'll pass it around the table, the same way we can do
up in prayer. Uh, Bill Wales' memorial service will be today at 2 uh, at Alexis's funeral home. Um, I'll be doing a service there. So if there's anyone who wishes to come down and be with the Wales family, they came out of the Colesville Church. I'm sure they would be delighted to see you. That's Pinkles, right? Pinkles, yeah. No, is that Pinkles? Yes. yes. All right, Pinkles. Two o'clock uh, for the Wales family. <laughs> Well, most people know Alexis. Okay. You can't yeah, live right. in this area and not know Alexis. Right. I love Alexis. Everybody knows Alexis, and Alexis knows everybody. I love her. She's great. Joy. Yeah, she's awesome. Before you do the benediction, I wanted to like to say I talked to her Marilyn yesterday. Mm -hmm. She's doing well. Good. She said, tell everyone. She thinks about them all the time, yeah. and she loves you all. Yeah. Give her our best as well. Yeah. <laughs> And Scott's doing pretty good. I mean, he still has oh, yeah, sure. medical yeah. issues, but uh, he's been around fairly good. Good. Yeah. And I got a chance uh, to meet the first <coughs> one, well, one of the first kids I baptized, Harper, <laughs> the other night in uh, the diner. Was it Harper? Wow. Yeah, it was Harper. She was one of the first. And uh, her mom is, uh, is planning to eventually come back, but she's in that. I have another child who's in sports history. So we're trying to work mm -hmm. around that. <laughs> but I did get to see Harper, and I, I saw her and I said, you know, I held you when you were like, Three months old, and she lives me. Uh -huh. <laughs> but she, they're doing well, and they have a, she has a little baby sister now. So we're hoping they'll eventually start coming back. She's good friends with Katie, so if we get one, we might get a two for the deal. <laughs> Receive now the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and give you comfort and peace. And may his touch rest gently on your shoulders as you go out into the world and be the living ambassadors of Christ, co-heirs in his kingdom, and the messenger of his salvation and saving grace. Amen. 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 There's still some food left. Help yourself. If you want, take what you can home with somebody else.